Hi Miles, thanks for the footage. Uh, just looking back through um, some of your old swings, it's around about two years to the day when we started working together online and trying to build some changes into your swing. I mean, the difference in your your swing from November 2015 to now is remarkable. Uh, still some familiar traits in there that we want to keep chipping away at and trying to eradicate a little bit more. Um, one thing I'd like you to pay attention to a little bit is the structure of the legs, particularly from face on. You see this sort of, this right knee gets kinked in, this right foot gets a little bit square. And that's one of the reasons, though, from down the line, the camera angle looks a little bit off to me. It looks like it's being filmed from sort of, well, not directly down the stance line. So ideally, we'd want to film it from directly down the stance line with the camera sort of in line with that stance line and at about sternum height. So that would be where the camera will be. Ideally, the camera angle here, <coughs> excuse me, is a little bit off. Having said that, the, the right knee being kinked in, the right foot being hooked in a little bit too much, tends to just encourage just a little bit of an outward hand path from P1 to P2, ever so slightly. Like I say, I'm not going to be too critical there um, based on the camera angle, but I'd like to see you with your right foot turned out. Maybe, maybe not as much as you see with some players where both feet match up, but certainly maybe sort of 20 degrees, which in turn will reposition this knee, which would free up this hip during the early part of the backswing, allowing the hands to trace a slightly more inward path rather than the current, like I say, slightly too linear path from P1 to P2. So just a little change at P1. Uh, if you wanted move, to move more towards a draw by a shot, you'd also consider softening this right arm a little bit which would also lower this right shoulder a little bit. So slightly different um, right arm condition at P1. Um, some players demonstrate quite a straight right arm, other players a little bit softer. Certainly if you're looking to draw the ball, the softer right arm is a little bit more appropriate. As the right arm softened, you would find this right shoulder would drop back a little bit at P1. Um, something again that I've noticed over the years that you tend to just get a little bit open with the shoulders uh, potentially at P1 relative to the stance line not necessarily saying that you then you know you don't align right and square the shoulders up to the target etc but certainly have a tendency to get the right arm too straight right shoulder a little bit too far forward which makes it again difficult to externally rotate during the backswing so <coughs> excuse me some little changes that are set up that I'd like to see introduced Onto the swing itself, from face on to P4, brilliant. I mean, looking back a couple of years ago, the head had spun way round here. The left arm had got sucked in way behind you. The left knee was working inwards too much, etc., etc. I mean, that now is a much more stable goal swing. I like the neck tilts, I like the control of the left arm, I like the way you're extending turning and tilting everything very stable sorry about that we'll come back to that in a second similar down the line right leg extends nicely uh, something that you might want to pay attention to is the rate at which this right leg extends um, perhaps you know if you, if you imagine the pressure is sort of on the midpoint of the right foot um, during the backswing, you want to feel as the right leg straightens, the pressure should start to move towards the right heel a little bit more. You don't want to see that happening too much too soon, so the right leg should straighten incrementally, P1 to P4. Uh, the footage I've had to screen capture from my iPad, so it's a little bit jumpy, so apologies for that. Um, you see in your case, your right hip gets a little bit too deep, a little bit too soon. The right leg straightens a little bit too much, a little bit too soon. I'd rather see it do that than not straighten. But you see at that point, right hip working a little bit deeper. So the right leg straightening is facilitating a nice turn, facilitating a nice turn. The, the left knee has to then flex forward to, to add some tilt to the turn. Um, if the right leg is straightening too much too soon and the hip's turning too deep, the left knee can't really flex fast enough to offset it so just a little bit of attention to that throughout the winter months 
all in all, though, pretty good position at P4. Now then, this is where you want to have the bulk of your work between now and the next time you send me some footage. I'm just going to put the box around the head. So standard procedure, checkpoint wise, what we're using in the system. I'm going to put a little line at the torso so to illustrate the inclination to the ground. Put the hip tilts in there. Good to go up P4. Very flat lead wrist, which I like. Right elbow tucked in. Left arm nice and deep. Similar line, just slightly above the shoulder line, which is great, considering the right shoulder's disappeared at this point. Looking good from P work for P4 from face on. So I'm going to com concentrate from predominantly on the down the line image here. And we see that from 4 to 5.5, the chest pulls away from the ball very quickly. The tilt of the shoulders levels out too much too soon. So this is these are all linked. This is an extension piece. From P4 to P5, the player should be getting back into flexion. So that's turning and flexing whilst adding some hip slide. What you start to do is you start to extend all the way to P4 and then continue that extension with very little flex going back in from P4 to P5.5. When you look at it from face on, what you tend to see then is you tend to see more of a sort of left shoulder up head potentially dropping back uh, that's not because of too much hip slide by the way it's because you're not rotating enough so when the extension kicks in the head tends to work up and back so your head's dropping back there slightly but it's also working upwards no real return to flexion you can see there's no real flex going in the right knee the right ankle Back in the pelvis, we go back to the down the line view. So from a pretty good P4, the sequence should be going into the ground before then springing up out of the ground. And in your case, you start to come up out of the ground before you've gone down. Now whilst doing that, you start to uncock the wrist and roll accumulator three which starts to get the sweet spot back in line for not a bad delivery into the golf ball. So the move here with the torso is very much a right shifted move. So if you were to pull the chest away from the ball, level out the pelvis, tuck the hips under and maintain your wrist conditions, you'd hit out dramatically at the golf ball. However, if you pull the chest away from the ball, tuck the hips under but start to uncock the wrists and roll the hands the sweet spot will tumble out in front of the hands and consequently you'll start to come into the ball from a pretty inline position but you're trying to line two things up you've got an extreme push move and an extreme pull move um, as, the sh as the chest pulls away and the shoulder raises the arc is also widening so therefore the wrists have to uncock in order for you to hit the golf ball and reach the golf ball. That can lead to some issues in regards to controlling um, your low point coming into impact. So what I'd like you to concentrate on here, it's going to be a, it's a relatively straightforward drill. But it, what it's going to do is it's going to teach you how to externally rotate the lead shot, the trail shoulder, uh, the trail elbow whilst getting back into flexion so we're trying to increase flexion in the knees the pelvis the chest whilst externally rotating the trail shoulder and the trail elbow now you don't need to go um, full gg swing tips on this i think this move is something that's valid in your case i think it's something that's done way too much uh, to way too high a degree uh, with a lot of coaches online so I just want you to do this quite simple drill but you're going to see I'm going to get a player who I've worked with recently doing the drill um, up for you so you can have a look at it and I'm just going to play it through so I'm going to get that swing up now for you 
Okay, so the footage on the left now is uh, myself working with Peter, who visited me from Austria earlier in the year, and we're working on a drill that we call drop and catch, which will become uh, pretty self-evident once you play this through. So I'm just going to play this sort of lesson excerpt through for you now, so that you can get a feel and appreciation for how we want this drill to be done. So you get to P4. It's weird. Completely weird without my hand. You go in. <laughs> You're lost without it. So go to 4, hold it. Leave the club behind and then catch it. Okay, do that again. Try and catch this one a little bit sooner. So this is like 4 to 4.2. There you go. Do that again. So see how the, the body's going but the arms can't go too soon yet. Okay, now, when Peter demonstrates this exercise, what he's doing is he is, as he lets go of the club, I'm asking him to get the body back into flexion or let go of the club, but move the body towards the impact position. So you can see that the torso is going back into flexion. It's turning and flexing. So this for you, this is 4 to 5.5. Turn and flex. This is the torso only. Turn and flex. Now in order for him to then catch the club, he has to, as he's turning and flexing, he has to keep the trail shoulder and the trail elbow externally rotated. If he didn't, and he engaged the arms too fast, he'd never catch the club. So this drill of going to P4, holding it, and then letting go of the club, moving the body towards its impact position, but then catching the golf club. So the goal is to P4 and stop, hold it, get chest onto the golf ball whilst letting go of the club, then catching it. So let go, get chest on, then catch. P4. Let go, chest on, then catch. That would be the sequence that you would be going through. P4, hold, let go. Get chest on. That's the turn and the flex. And catch. That's the external rotation. So that means that the body is introducing more uh, of a, in this case for you, more less of a push bias, more of a pull bias. Whereas the arms and the wrists are demonstrating a little bit more of a right, right shifted, uh, less pull bias, more push bias. So you watch that move, body returning to flexion, um, trail arm and shoulder externally rotating, versus the move that you would tend to make, which is player starts to extend, no flexion going back in, and a little bit too much internal rotation of the right shoulder and right arm. And that's the drill. When you're doing the drill, obviously you're not hitting golf balls. Do the drill away from the course. Keep drilling that movement in. Get a feel. This is purely 4 to 5.5. Once that feels in there, go ahead and hit some shots. Whilst hitting shots, make two moves doing the drill for every one ball that you hit. So two moves, two drills, then go ahead, hit a ball. Two drills, hit a ball. When you're hitting the ball, don't think too much about it. The more you do the drill, the more the sequencing should change. You'll start to get some feels. You'll start to refine it. And feel free when you're doing that to send me any questions that you've got. So good luck with it between now and when we speak next. Great progress made from P1 to P4. Some little tweaks at P1 required. Overall, the swing's improving, but I really want to get into what's going on from P4 to P5.5 now going forward with you. Well done.